For so many of us, certain songs can trigger very strong memories. It takes us back to a specific moment in time. And for those with Alzheimer's and dementia, this phenomena has a very special importance. And joining us now is UC Irvine Medical Center geriatrician Dr. Laura Mosqueda to help explain why patients who have Alzheimer's dementia, they can recall these memories linked to music after losing so many others. First and foremost, let's talk about what is happening to someone's brain when they're suffering with dementia. Sure, with this big beautiful brain model, um, what we see here is the outside, and just to orient people, this is the front of the brain. Um, and here's the back of the brain that's really involved in things like um, movement and balance. But if we open this brain up, don't try this at home, <laughs> um, there are uh, deeper parts of the brain that are really involved and important in memory, particularly an area called the hippocampus. And this is the area of the brain that tends to get damaged first in Alzheimer's disease. And that's why people have trouble making new memories. And then if you switch back to the outside of the brain, there are certain areas in what's called the temporal parietal lobe that also gets damaged early. And that's why people have so much trouble with finding their words and with language. But in some ways you can say every memory can be stored slightly differently. And what I do want to show really quickly is how in the world we process music. Because obviously something else is being triggered when someone can listen to music and instantly recall their past when they can't under different circumstances. So we all know the joy that music can bring. And when you're listening to music, a lot of times you are thinking about fond memories. Maybe it was your first girlfriend or boyfriend, your first kiss, that day at the beach as a child. But what really is going on in your brain when you're listening to music? Well, it turns out a multitude of things are occurring. And first and foremost, when you're hearing that music, your primary auditory center here in the temporal lobe is processing that music and interacting with your frontal lobe. Things like rhythm, pitch, beat, melody, you're feeling it, right? Well, that's the first step. When you start to hear the words of a song, different areas are involved. involved. Wernicke's area and Broca's area. That's understanding the words, producing the words. Maybe you're singing along to that song. We don't have words to this particular song, but you all know what I mean. The minute you hear a beat or a rhythm, you might start singing along. Your visual cortex in the occipital lobe actually may play a role. Maybe you're trying to visualize the notes. And how often do we hear a song and you're tapping your foot? Well, this is your motor cortex, so that's involved as well. And then this little area, medial prefrontal cortex, that really gets stimulated when there's a particular memory taking place. And, and the one we always talk about is maybe it's your first kiss. But that helps develop a long-term memory associated with a particular song or type of music which to me is truly remarkable, and it shows you how a brain, even when damaged, can do remarkable things. But how, how can someone like Henry be unable to talk to his own daughter, listens to a song, and then all of a sudden he's reminiscent about the good old days? He's now involving so many other parts of the brain that you just described that haven't been damaged by the Alzheimer's disease. And those parts still work. And I think that's part of the never give up hope, which is even though there are parts that aren't working, there's a lot of parts that still are. And what they did is find a way to reawaken those parts and, and let them come to the fore and be useful for him. Thank you so much, Dr. Matthew.